Hello from the Tukas Copy TV studio in Geneva. We're talking about negative interest rates with Professor Frank Hollenbeck. He's Professor of Finance at the International University in Geneva. Professor Hollenbeck, welcome to the studio. Good to be here. So the ECB, then the Swiss, the Danish, the Swiss central banks, they all have imposed negative interest rates on their reserve deposits. So what does this mean? Well, uh, the purpose of the negative interest rates uh, for the ECB was basically to induce banks uh, not to hold such large excess reserves. So the goal was for the banks to basically lend out this money. Okay, And it's a bit like trying to bring a horse to water. Uh, you can bring him to water, but you can't make him drink. And the problem we have in Europe is that very banks have very few uh, creditworthy customers. And the ECB's action is actually probably uh, r having just the opposite effect, in the sense that uh, with negative interest rates, it's caused a compression in uh, the profit margins, in the sense that banks are financial intermediaries and they make their money between uh, the difference between the deposit rate, the, mon the, the rate at which they um, charge for deposits, and the rate at which they lend the money out. Okay? And uh, what's happened in the case of uh, Denmark is that Danish banks are now charging negative interest rates to their depositors and it's causing depositors to actually withdraw funds. So it's reducing bank profits. Okay? Also, we have a situation where uh, Basel III is requiring banks to uh, purchase a lot more more of short-term liquid assets, and those assets have uh, relatively uh, low interest rates at the moment. Okay, this sounds very interesting, but who is paying for this at the end? Well, in theory, we shouldn't be able to get negative interest rates because instead of uh, putting your money in a bank and being charged negative interest rates, you can always stuff your mattress okay, with the cash that you have. Okay. Now, why is it we're seeing negative interest rates? In other words, why would a bank okay, purchase a U.S. government bond for $1,000 okay, to get $990 in a year from now? And the reason the banks are doing this is that they know that they'll be able to take this government bond okay, and sell it to the ECB for 1003 So they'll make you know, three euro profit. The ECB will be left with uh, purchasing a, this bond for 1003 and then get 990 in a year from now. So in other words, what this is doing is basically indirect, indirectly uh, financing government expenditures. So they do at the end money printing. That's cool. Yeah, it's basically money printing. We always have to remember that every euro the central bank prints Okay, is a tax on cash balance. It's basically legal counterfeiting, okay? In the sense that it's theft, it's theft of the purchasing power of the money that's in your pocket. Okay, next uh, word is quantitative easing. The ECB has started this uh, ambitious program with the uh, aim to purchase 60 billion euros a month for over a year. So what does this mean in detail? Well, uh, it's turning out that ECB's current monetary policy is probably being defeated by its previous monetary policy. I mean, think of it if you're a bank, okay? Are you going to sell a government bond to the ECB, okay? The ECB will give you funds, which will you, that you will then put as excess reserves in which you're being charged a negative interest rate. So there's very little incentive for banks to sell um, government bonds to the ECB. The same is true of insurance companies and pension funds. We have to remember that uh, uh, pension funds and insurance companies depend on having regular interest income to basically meet payments. Okay? So why would these pension funds and insurance companies sell government bonds to the ECB to get funds to purchase new government bonds at a lower interest rate? And as we've seen from uh, the quantity of easing that's been put into place since last week, that the ECB has actually purchased very little, um, very, very few bonds in the last week. Professor Hollenbeck, so will this help spur growth in Europe then? 
Well, as we can see from this graph, uh, interest rates in Europe are already very close to zero. So it's not going to uh, spur additional lending. And if we look at uh, Japan or the United States, okay, it hasn't been effective at spurring growth. What it has done, though, is cause an increase in asset prices. For example, uh, in the U.S., corporations are borrowing basically to repurchase their own stocks. Okay, So if you're part of the 1%, then you've benefited from this quantitative easing. The problem is, is that since uh, legal counterfeiting is a tax on cash balances, the uh, people who are paying for this are the uh, 99%. Professor Frank Hollenbeck from the International University in Geneva, thank you very much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. And thanks for watching. Do make sure to keep clicking back on the Dukas Copy TV website for latest updates and exclusive interviews. Have a great day and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.